Hi, my name is Heather Sue Rosen. I am speaking as a medical sociologist and postdoctoral researcher at the New England Complex Systems Institute. I am the child of two Air Force veterans, a resident of the state of Georgia, a member of the World Health Network, and a disabled person with an autoimmune disease and over 15 years of experience with medical gaslighting related to complex chronic illness. Some of these chronic illnesses put me at higher risk of complications from COVID-19, like juvenile idiopathic arthritis, asthma, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, EDS, type three, and mast cell activation disorder, MCAS. Others, like postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, POTS, can arise after COVID-19 infection. Many long COVID patients have POTS. We are already ill-equipped to manage the onslaught of newly disabled patients with these illnesses, which were, as recently as 2019, considered rare, with some going as far as to question whether they were even real. Even now, with a growing population of people who are aware of POTS, long COVID patients complain of long wait times for appointments, only to arrive and be referred to a psychiatrist before ever receiving a physical exam. Allowing COVID-19 to spread unchecked in healthcare facilities exacerbates these difficulties for people with complex chronic illnesses seeking healthcare, and more people will become ill with long COVID, a risk that increases with each subsequent reinfection. Healthcare workers are at inherently higher risk for reinfection with inadequate PPE, and many have left the workforce. Many people with long COVID have also dropped out of the workforce, including healthcare workers, but also across industries. Without protection against COVID-19 infection in healthcare, we are creating a situation that contributes to ongoing worker shortages, both in and outside of healthcare, while increasing the population of patients needing not just care, but specialized care. There are two main reasons it is not sufficient to limit respirator usage to certain areas of the hospital clinic or certain contexts of interactions. The first and most important reason is that SARS-CoV-2 is spread via infectious aerosols which can linger in the air long after an infected person has left the space. Furthermore, surgical and procedural masks are insufficient protection against infectious aerosols. N95 or better respirator masks must be required in healthcare and not limited to patient treatment areas. Patients must wait in the waiting room amongst other patients, some of whom may be infectious. They must also enter exam rooms shortly after other patients have left the space. COVID-19 may still be lingering in the exam room under these circumstances. Lastly, some types of healthcare are performed in communal spaces. For example, physical therapist office, offices are often set up with several exam tables and various exercise equipment in one large open space. In my own visits to physical therapy since the lifting of mask mandates in healthcare, I have experienced hostility from clinic staff for wearing a mask and pushback from providers when I request that they mask. I have had to file ADA accommodations to ensure my safety at routine healthcare appointments. This leads me to reason number two, that a universal mandate for N95 or better respirators in healthcare settings is the only truly safe policy for protecting patients from COVID-19, which is not only still present, but is currently surging in the United States. While fighting for safe and appropriate healthcare is not new to me, it is definitely not something that makes me smile to see that so many others are now forced to do the same. As a sociologist, I have researched how something called cultural health capital directly affects the level and speed of care for chronically ill patients. Cultural health capital comes from experience and proximity to healthcare. The idea being that more experience and proximity you have, the better you will be able to advocate in a way that the physician accepts and therefore the better and speedier your care will be. Patients with illnesses like POTS are often given some deviant label for example, when they are referred to psychiatry instead of being taken seriously when presenting physical symptoms, or when they are dismissed by all but the most specialized physicians, and even when they have to advocate for their rights under the ADA to have their providers protect them from COVID-19 because providers assume they are not vulnerable. The deviant label tanks cultural health capital. By failing to mandate N95 or better respirators in healthcare, we force patients to advocate for themselves in situations where they do not have the cultural health capital required to achieve the necessary outcome via advocating for themselves. For example, I have a PhD, I am white, I am thin, I have moved in elite circles to know how to carry myself as such. I have a lot of privilege for a patient with complex chronic illness, and yet I am often not taken seriously until my spouse, a white man gets involved. It is naive to assume all patients considered high risk for severe acute phase COVID-19 will be able to successfully advocate for themselves so that their providers wear appropriate PPE during the exam. 
that patients who achieve ADA accommodations are often still faced with a provider in surgical or procedural masks instead of an N95 or better respirator is in opposition to aerosol science. As an expert who has frequently been ignored by expert medical providers when it comes to my own safety and health care, and given that this happened long before COVID-19, I urge HICPAC to acknowledge the need for experts in other sciences, particularly aerosol and social sciences. We must be consulted regarding the draft guidelines for standard precautions. Healthcare is a human right and healthcare providers took an oath to protect patients. I urge you to protect us. Thank you.